Okay, so let me get this straight. If someone runs over 14 people with a car in the span of 60 minutes, it's a homicide spree. If someone runs over 14 people in the span of 60 years, it's a haunting? Yes, that is exactly what I'm trying to say. What part of it did you not understand? Can you start over from the beginning? Yeah, I've said before that paranormal topics aren't really my thing, but you know what? It's Halloween. Stick a pumpkin up my ass and call me spooky. But I'm already wearing the pumpkin. Spooky. In 1983, famous horror author Stephen King published Christine, a novel centered around a haunted vintage car with a mind of its own and an impressive murder streak. Christine was adapted into a movie the same year, and in typical horror movie fashion, it may or may not be based on a true story. You know, this bull that appears at the bottom of every movie poster ever? You know what I'm talking about. Haunted house? Haunted mirror? Haunted doll? Haunted box? Why not haunted car? I'm Vibby, and on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, The Golden Eagle. A big thank you to Skyla for suggesting this episode. Let's start this wild ride straight into automotive hell and hope we don't end up roadkill ourselves. The Golden Eagle is a classic 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition. If you have no idea what the literal f that is, it's okay, here's a picture. Since this was a limited edition model, only about 5,000 copies of this car were manufactured in all. Originally, they were intended to be used as police vehicles, and this is kind of where the story begins. In Old Orchard Beach, Maine, the local police force had purchased several of these limited edition cars, and things were going swimmingly save for one. This particular car had come with a few minor malfunctions. Goodbye seatbelt, goodbye doors, goodbye speed limit, goodbye controls. On top of that, all three of the officers who drove the car went on to kill their whole families and then themselves. So that's interesting. The car was soon sold off to a man in the area who painted it gold and named it Golden Eagle. He also experienced some similar malfunctions with the vehicle, minus the murder-suicide part anyway and decided to lock it up in a garage until he could find a way to get it off his hands. He did find an interested buyer, who was convinced that the defects could be fixed by some adjustments to the engine and circuits. Unsurprisingly, it didn't help. It may have only exacerbated the problems. Corpses of small animals were found around the car almost every day, but birds and squirrels weren't enough for this vehicle's insatiable bloodlust. It started going for children. A girl was hit by a different car while riding her bicycle, and the impact sent her flying into the Golden Eagle's front bumper. She died before paramedics could make it to the scene. Odd stories about the Golden Eagle continued well into the 80s and 90s, as well as one more child death to add to the streak. A local church group decided that the car was possessed by a demon and went out to vandalize it because what the f else would Jesus do? The vandals were not spared from the car's fury either. One was decapitated by an 18-wheeler and a few others were hit by lightning. In 2008, yet another child decided to simply touch the car. They ended up killing their entire family and then burning their house down. So that's interesting. Is it getting spooky yet? Pask, we need to make the spookier. Huh? You're a ghost, do something. <laughs> In recent years, another group of vandals from another church came along, disassembled the car into several pieces, and sent them off to various junkyards in hopes of stopping the Golden Eagle's reign of terror. My guess is it was one of those churches that think books like Harry Potter and the Chronicles of Narnia are satanic, because anyone who's ever read any fantasy novel ever would have known that breaking apart the evil artifact and scattering the pieces across the land doesn't contain the evil, it only spreads it. So now we just have a bunch of loose, demon-possessed car parts floating around. A plus f***ing job. The current owner, Wendy Allen, put out a call for help on the internet, and luckily she was able to retrieve enough of the parts to get the car back into driving condition. She says that the only problems she's experienced with the vehicle is that the doors occasionally fly open when she's going down the highway. But some people in Old Orchard Beach claim that Wendy is a witch and has been using the car to cast death spells. Not gonna lie, Wendy herself is a very interesting person. 
She takes pride in owning haunted cars, decorating them, and driving them around to shows across the country. That said, it's best to take everything I've said here with a grain of salt. Ghost stories are often over-embellished to make them way creepier than what actually happened, and there's no doubt in my mind that's definitely what's gone down here. It's said that the Golden Eagle has killed anywhere between 14 and 32 people, but it's hard to find any actual documents related to those deaths. Like I mentioned, grain of salt. Anyways, happy Halloween everyone! Be careful out there doing your Hallow's Eve celebrations, and always have a contingency plan in case of haunted cars chasing you down for your candy. Or your soul. Hi everyone! Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. This week's featured Vibisona is by Chai 16 on Twitter. Link to the artist page is in the description. If you'd like to try your hand at creating your own Vibisona, use the hashtag on the screen and you could get featured. And here's some comments from the last video. If this episode gave you a reason to fear your own car, please be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. If you'd like to support the channel, I have art commissions and a Ko-Fi page available. Buy me a coffee and I'll make you a little sketch as a way of saying thanks. Links to all that, as well as links to my social media, are in the description. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you real soon.